everyone. Welcome to the Chem Channel. This is Xu Hang. Today, I will present our recent published paper in ACS Nano. From our previous tutorial video, you already know that the well-separated peaks in CV curves are considered a key indicator of diffusion control process with distinct ferroidic charge transfer. However, in this work, we would like to show you something different. Before that, I would like to take the chance to thank all the co-authors and my supervisor, Yuri. I really enjoy exploring the mechanism. Hope you who are watching this video will enjoy today's video as well. Get ready here. I will show you an electrochemical anomaly observed in titanium carbide mixing electrode in welding cell electrolytes. For TI3C2 maxing, its electrochemical energy storage process has been studied previously in both the sulfuric acid electrolyte and organic electrolyte. Based on the shape of the CV, one can tell the charge storage mechanism. We have talked about the general roles in our previous tutorial 10. A pair of peaks can be observed in CVs in both the sulfuric acid electrolyte and the organic electrolytes. The peaks on the anodic and cathodic branches locate at almost the same potential, indicating non-diffusion control process or capacity behavior. Because TH3C2 will be oxidized at potential more positive than 0.2 volt versus silver in the salting solvent electrolyte, electrochemical behavior of maxine at a relative positive potential has not been explored before. When water in salt electrolyte is used, the potential window of TI3C2 maxine is extended to 0.8 volt versus silver. The extension of the stable electrochemical potential window results in a new electrochemical process, as shown by a pair of strong peaks in the anodic and the cathodic scan of the CV curve. Similar pair of peaks can be observed in three different kinds of water in salt electrolyte, the lysin TFSI, lysin bromine, and lysin chloride. The separation in potential delta EP between the anodic and cathodic peaks is all larger than 0.4 volt at a scan rate of 2 mV per second. Based on our experiences with such a large delta EP in CV, our first assumption is that it is a diffusion controlled process with distinct ferroidic charge transfer or battery like behavior. But is it really the case? To understand the process, we should first know what kind of ion evolves in the process, either cation or anion. So, the in situ XRD analysis was performed to monitor the change in the interlayer space of the titanium carbide electrode during electrochemical cycling in the watering salt electrolyte. In the lysine chloride watering salt electrolyte, an abrupt decrease from 12.9 Armstrong to 11 Armstrong of the despacing of titanium carbide was observed at 0.5 volt, and an abrupt increase from 11 to 0.9 Armstrong was observed at 0.24 volt. The abrupt shrinkage and expansion of the despacing both occur at the onset potential of the anodic and cathodic peaks in the CV, which is marked as black dots and red dots in this figure, respectively. The dramatic shrinkage of the interlayer space at the anodic peak and the expansion of the interlayer space at the cathodic peak indicates that anion intercalation and deintercalation does not play a role in the observed electrochemical process. When 21M lysine TFSI was used as the electrolyte, approximately the same trend and the magnitude of the change of in despacing were observed. But we know that the size of the TFSI is much larger than the chloride ion. So this further rule out the possibility of anion intercalation. Hence, the peaks in the CV in the watering salt electrolyte is accompanied by lysine ion intercalation instead of anion intercalation. Okay, so let's go back to the question. Is it a battery-like process or a capacitive-like process? Firstly, Electrochemical characterizations is used. 
Nyquist plot recorded in 19.8 M lysine chloride electrolytes at different applied potential show close to vertical slopes in the low frequency regions, except for a slight deviation at 0.8 volt. The vertical slope indicates a surface reaction control process. The B value of each three voltage salt electrolyte were determined to be between 0.5 to 1, indicating that the electrochemical process involved both surface and diffusion controlled kinetics. The ways to calculate the B value and interpret the impedance can also be found in our tutorial video 6 and 17. Next, we use UVV spectroscope to observe the change of oxidation state of the titanium in TS3C2. The position and intensity of the plasma resonance peaks of titanium carbide is now to shift bearing changes in the oxidation state of titanium caused by the transfer of charge from lithium to the oxygen terminations of maxine. At the peak potentials in the CV recorded in sulfuric acid electrolyte, the rate of transmittance change increases, suggesting that the rate of charge transfer increases at the redox peak potential in sulfuric acid electrolyte. Conversely, in the 19.8 mole lysine chloride electrolyte, the UVV's transmittance decreases at a slow and almost constant rate with increasing potential. This indicates that the ferroidic process accompanying the peaks in the CV in the voltage cell electrolyte is much weaker than that of the surface redox in the sulfuric acid electrolyte. So all experimental evidence suggests that the separated cathodic and anodic peaks in the CV observed for titanium carbide in the water in solid light are not due to the diffusion-limited distinct faradic processes. Instead, the surface control behavior dominates the observed electrochemical response. Then what exactly this process is like? The electrochemical quartz crystal microbalance was performed to in-situ monitor the mass change of the electrode and the density functional theory simulations were performed to quantitatively correlate the change in despacing with the, the intercalated species. It is very clear to see that the mass change of the electrode can be divided into three stages. Stage one is the stage where almost uh, no water accompanied the inserted lithium. At stage two, a dramatic increase in the amount of inserted water was observed corresponding to 2.85 water molecule per intercalated lithium. And at stage three, the amount of the water per intercalated lithium decreased to 1.5. The charge story process is illustrated in this schematic. We find that at the potential with no peaks, intercalation of lithium ion is accompanied by dissolution. So each lithium can only bring in 1 to 1.5 water. And the intercalation of the solvated lysine with three water accounts for the large variations in the despacing and is responsible for the peaks seen in the CV in the water cell electrolyte. If you are interested to know more, please refer to the original paper. A link to this paper is offered in the description of the video below. We maintain this channel only on the weekends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. The videos in our ECAM channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.